right, so we're going to be doing rotations about the origin using matrices. So just to give you a brief idea of what that looks like, I've got the letter A here sitting in quadrant one of a Cartesian plane. Now, if I were to take that and rotate it 90 degrees um, anti-clockwise, it would end up, I'm turning my head the other way, um, it would end up looking something like that. Every point has been taken and rotated by a quarter turn uh, compared to the origin. Okay, so the, there's a wheel at the origin with the axis at the origin and it's spinning around that origin. Okay, uh, it's easier to show you using GeoGebra. A very quick rotation here. Uh, I've got a square, it's got a point on the origin. When I rotate it around the origin, it's going to look like this. I'm rotating anti-clockwise and I've rotated 180 degrees now, 270 degrees now, and of course 360 degrees there. Okay, so that's what we mean by a rotation. We'll get back to that in a moment. Now you should recall that the all important points of 1, 0 and 0, 1 uh, kind of determine what our plane looks like. So we've done transformations where we um, change that value of one and that stretches that blue dot. And you can see I put a trace on that blue dot so we can see the blue dot stretching like that. We can change where the orange dot goes. I've put a trace on the orange dot as well. And we can sort of skew that as well. And we get some nice, neat little thing like that. So when it comes to rotations, we're still going to consider that blue and orange dot, that one zero and that zero one uh, in the same way. So here we are at rotations and I've got my rotation matrix here, cos zero, sine zero, negative sine zero and cos zero. Uh, now what does, what is cos zero? Well that's the number one and that's the number zero, sine zero is zero. So that makes sense, one zero because that's that point there, one, zero. Uh, now this uh, negative sign zero is zero, but it's a bit weird that that negative's there, but we'll talk about why in a second. And cos zero, that's one. And that makes sense because the coordinates of the orange dot are zero and one. Uh, now watch what happens as I change that degree from zero upwards, so let's say to 45. Okay, there we are, 46, that'll do. We've gone up to this. Now, you can see this curve on the blue dot, it's curving around, and you can see this orange dot here, it's curving around. You can see the entire plane is turning as well. Um, now, the coordinates of that blue dot are cos 46, sine 46. The coordinates of that orange dot are negative sine 46, cos 46. So again, by moving the points or transforming the points 1, 0 and 0, 1, we're transforming the entire plane. In this case, we're rotating the entire plane. I did this earlier in the video, but now it should take on slightly new meaning for you. Let's zoom in and rotate. Now, as I rotate this circle, this square around, those points create a unit circle. So here we are talking about matrices and somehow we're now talking about the unit circle. So what's actually happening? Well let's focus most on the blue dot because the blue dot's easy and we're going to move to an angle that we should be familiar with 30 degrees. So here we are at 30 degrees. Now cos 30, cos 30, this thing here, is equal to root three on two, which is about 0 0.86. And you can see that the x coordinate of our blue dot is 0 0.86, because all we've done is move to that point. Um, now here, sine 30, sine 30 is one half. And you can see the y uh, coordinate of my blue dot is 0 0.5, one half. So all that's happening when we rotate is that that x coordinate, um, zero, uh, one zero, is being moved around the unit circle the same way that we've moved any point in the past around the unit circle. 
Now the bigger mystery uh, is about to be revealed and that is this orange dot here. Now what's happening with the orange dot? Well you can see that it's been moved. Uh, let's consider the x coordinate first. It's been moved by the same distance that the blue dot has been moved. It's been moved by, uh, or it's coordinate, I suppose, in the same way that this y coordinate um, is 0 0.5. This one's x coordinate is negative 0 0.5. And that's why we're going to need this negative out the front, because we're pushing backwards into the second quadrant. Um, and similarly, we can use cos 30 here, positive cos 30, because we're moving in the second quadrant, so the y coordinate's still going to be positive there. So when it comes to rotations, your life's going to be easier if you think more about that blue dot, 1, 0, as being cos sine theta, and then the orange dot is going to be negative sine theta, cos theta. All right, so there's a few little notes. There's our rotation matrix there, cos theta, sine theta, negative sine theta, cos theta. There's a little drawing of what we're getting at with uh, sine theta and cos theta there. Um, and there's a little screen grab of our GeoGebra file. But now I'm going to do a couple of examples. All right, so here's a good example. Find the matrix that represents a rotation of 60 degrees in the anti-clockwise direction. What matrix should I apply to an object to rotate at 60 degrees anti-clockwise? So we'll call this R, the rotation matrix. And the rotation matrix is going to be equal to cos theta, sine theta, negative sine theta, cos theta. And in this particular example, that's cos 60, sine 60, negative sine 60, cos 60. And now you just need like your standard triangles. There's a 60 degree angle there. Cos theta is equal to um, adjacent over hypotenuse, so that's one half. This next one's going to be root 3 on 2. This next one's going to be negative root 3 on 2. And the next one's going to be one half. If you apply that rotation matrix to any point or any object, you will get something that rotates 60 degrees anti-clockwise. Now here's a second example here. We're going to rotate the point 42 by 45 in a clockwise direction. Now that's important information because we've been doing everything anti-clockwise. Okay, uh, so we're going to say that the image matrix is equal to the rotation matrix. Let's call the rotation matrix R and we're going to multiply it by the original point. All right, so the rotation matrix is going to be cos, um, that's 45, but it's clockwise, so that's negative 45 degrees, and that's the trick with this one. If we're moving clockwise, we're doing negative angles. Um, negative sine, oh, not negative sine. Oh, yes, it is negative sine, sorry. Negative sine, negative 45, and cos, negative 45. Um, and we're going to multiply that by the point 42. All right, so all of that is our root 2 on 2. Uh, root, root 2 on 2, root 2 on 2, root 2 on 2, root 2 on 2, um, 4 and 2. But we need to consider which ones of these are positive and which ones of these are negative. Uh, we're in the fourth quadrant, um, C, A, S, T. So cosine is going to be positive, positive, positive. That one's going to be negative because it's sine in the fourth quadrant. And this one is going to be positive because it's sine in the fourth quadrant, but it's negative sine in the fourth quadrant. Okay, and from there, we just multiply these matrices and we're done. I'm not going to do that on camera, but it's root 2 on 2 times 4, root 2 on 2 times 2, add them together. Negative root 2 on 2 times 4 and root 2 on 2 times 2, add them together, and you'll get 3 root 2, negative root 2. Um, now, what does that look like? We can sort of double check that what we're doing makes sense. We've got the point 4, 2, 1, 2, 
one, two, three, four, and two over here like this. We rotate that 45 degrees and it's going to end up here somewhere. Um, a negative y coordinate of negative root two, quite close to the x axis, and um, an x coordinate of three root two out here somewhere. That looks like it makes sense. That's good enough for me. You can draw it to scale if you want. That is rotations about the origin using matrices.